Welcome to my witch altar tour. I'm also not wearing the cape to be gimmicky. I'm literally doing another video slash challenge where I wear a cape every single day for a week. I feel very vampirous today. All right, here we go with the altar tour. Here is my overview of my witch altar, or at least what I'd like to call my altar. It is really just a place where I get to keep my most pretty things, my most lovely things, and the things that I'm most passionate about. So I usually try to dedicate some sort of corner of my room or my dresser to things that keep me going, things that are productive and also mindful. So without any further ado, let's begin on what I have on my altar. I guess let's begin from left to right, starting with my Hocus Pocus little chalkboard picture frame thing. I actually got this last year, whether or not in like the Christmas tree shop or something, and I've been using it for decor year round really, but mainly for October. I have it out on display, super cute and super lovely. Actually, I think I might've gotten this at Target now that I think about it. This is also from Target. This was from that $3 section at Target and, um, it's just a little black plant that I feel like really ties everything in together and of course hocus pocus to remind us to be witched. So I got this little pumpkin at Trader Joe's. It's 89 cents. They always have them every single fall along with cinnamon brooms. So the cinnamon broom, obviously cinnamon is very powerful and cinnamon is very lovely, especially during the season, but also it just smells so amazing. And I feel like it makes this space feel very whole and feel very alive, especially because it's an actual scent that when you walk by, you notice it. So she lies here on my altar. We'll get to this section in a moment. This golden plate I actually usually keep up there on my plant shelf. It's a space where I also keep candles and plants and herbs and wood and picture frames and glass decor. A lot of empty pots because I am really not a green thumb kind of gal, but I've been trying. I really, really have. But during the Halloween season, I keep it here as like a base for what is to come of this section. One of my first YouTube videos ever, Jordan actually picked this out. We were doing a take on lore DIYs. My boyfriend picks out my DIY supplies sorts of video and Jordan picked this out and I ended up making a whole creation out of it. And it came out really cool, but eventually I took it all apart and used the single pieces for different things. So if you guys wanna binge watch my old videos, you can find that. I will link it up here in the card somewhere. It's, oh my goodness, it's very old. <laughs> Let's get on to this. This is like my prized possession every single October, but also year round pretty much. I have this lying in my room somewhere. This actually needs its own little section to talk about. So now I was gifted this by my uncle, but it is not my uncle's. He actually had it because he keeps a lot of things and it was my great grandmother's. So this little note inside that I keep forever, Bianca. This tin belonged to your great-grandmother, Providenza Lavolsi. I think due to your love for Halloween, she would want you to have it. Enjoy. <laughs> so I always keep this little note in here, and I always keep this tin, and I actually find it quite special because this girl on here looks exactly like me when I was young, and it's kind of like that Halloween town 
Marnie looking in the book and Marnie looking at the witch and it looking like her sort of moment and I've just I've loved this for years I've had this for years upon years and I keep little trinkets and random things in here like this is a broken red string bracelet that you tie around your wrist and when it falls off you make a wish this is my graduation cap tassel from high school I have a little cross in here I'm pretty sure this probably fell off of rosary beads or something and I just I felt too I couldn't throw it away I have another 13 here we have just an evil eye with the Hamza this actually fell off of the red bracelet as well now they're gonna go back to where they belong and they're gonna just hang out and be my little my little lucky tin. Okay, next, I would talk about the black flame candle, but the candle's actually just from the dollar store, and I use it for a bunch of things. Just, I use this for my intro this year. Um, I also used it to seal this protection jar. Whereas this candle right here is what I have on my altar. Do not ask me why it curved like this. I mean, I'll tell you, I left it in a hot car, and I was really disappointed that I did that to myself but I tied these little twine around it because I used to actually have this sitting upon here. <laughs> We're just keeping it as a reminder to never forget. So let's move on to the last thing that is placed on the book, which is my crystal ball. I got this from Amazon. It was actually only $12.99. They have all different colors and I'll link it down below. I actually showed this in my Amazon witch haul back in August and I love it so much. Everything here is gonna be linked down below. I'm gonna try to find similar dupes and things like that because I, I just really love the way that my setup is and I don't know if you guys are into this as well. Obviously down here we have a White Barn Bath & Body Works Vanilla Bean Candle. I actually wanted to replace this with a fall scented candle that I actually recently just bought, which is this one, The Perfect Autumn. I feel like it would fit underneath there so much better and tie the space together, but I, I like this candle a lot since it's the fall. So maybe once the fall is over and I'm sick of this scent, I'll stick it back under there and we'll redecorate for the winter. But for now, we have the vanilla bean candle under here to just hold up the books. And I feel like it's very important to have these books up here. Obviously when I designed this, I really didn't design it with such a purpose, but once you start having things in a place, you start realizing why you did the things that you did. So I wanted all of the things up here to be a little bit higher than everything else. Everything else down here is stuff that could like, you know, bring you up, but these things are of importance. So this orange book down here is actually my poetry like journal. So currently in October, I haven't really been able to journal so much. I just haven't had the time. Doing vlogoween is a really, really big task. Now, this book is a semi-vintage book. I got it from Strand in the city. They have this whole dollar book section, and on it, it says, The Tents of Wickedness. And I thought that was really cool and really important to have on my altar. Next, we have my desert rose that I got in Salem. I got this at a place called the Coven's Cottage. And it's a desert rose, so it is a confidence and protection stone. So this is so lovely. I'll link one down below also. I really don't, I'm not really into crystals. Um, I don't really own anything like that, so that's my one and only. Next, moving on to this candle with my universe bracelet on it. So this candle is just a drip candle. I have these little tapered candle holders. I found these in Goodwill, actually, but I will try to link a dupe down below. This right here is my universe bracelet. I used to wear it in high school. I used to pretend that once I had it on, I would have this unbelievable power to do whatever I want, whatever I thought could come to me. It's just been such an important piece of my puzzle in life. It really got me through some weird shit and wearing something like this where it seems like the planets are around you and the universe is on your side really just like convinced me, convinced my brain and also quite frankly convinced the universe to give me whatever I wanted. And I stopped wearing the bracelet mainly because the strings on the inside thinned away. So every time I would wear it, it fell off and I was so scared of losing it. Moving on now to this little cauldron. <laughs> I got this actually at a Nikki Demore meet and greet. I was like, oh, I might as well go meet her. I could vlog it. And I actually put up the entire vlog. So if you guys want to watch it from last vlogoween, I will link it up here. But I got that cauldron from there and she signed it. So I was like, oh, I feel bad throwing it out. And it's also really cute for the Halloween decor. And I put in these little fake plants. But next we have my protection jar. Oh my gosh, how cute is she? I love her so much. This is new. So I'm like still so obsessed. I actually, if you guys missed this video, I filmed the entire 
entire thing of making my protection jar and if you guys want to watch it I will also link that up here. This is like the first tangible physical thing that I've made thus far currently in life. More tangible things which are my books. Fill you guys in on these books. Now I keep these books here year-round. Uh, the decor changes but the books always stay. This is my to-do list. Love checking things off. I love feeling like I have a purpose in life with this to-do list. Now this book is my new YouTube scheduling book. It was very ironic because in September I ran out of room in my old book and for some reason in this book it was the start of Logoween so it was really cool because I have this whole new book to myself. What I keep, what I need to do and it's just it's like another form of journaling for me it's basically a bullet journal now next is my planner this is a 2020 planner so it's about to run out but I have all of my gadgets and gizmos and things that I need to do in October in here it's just beautiful it's like this blue royal velvet keep things on your altar that make you happy because it's very important three more things on my altar one including this mirror one including this incense and one including this long yardstick. Now the mirror I feel draws no question as to why it is on here. It is a part of my vlogoween intro. It is a part of me. It's really just this beautiful piece of vintage mirror that is just so prevalent in witchery and I'm just obsessed with mirrors. I have this whole theory on mirrors and how I feel like they could do so much for you. Having something as a reflection to remind me that like you're the one doing this. This is so lovely. Do what you gotta do. Who cares what other people whatever like this this is what you like so do it <laughs> this incense goes without saying obviously a lot of spells require cleansing things and incense so this is a jasmine incense i kind of keep this up here at all times the questionable yardstick i've had this for years i do think my grandma gave it to me i'm if you didn't know a sewer um a seamstress of sorts i can pattern make, I can make my own clothes, I've made my own clothes, I made my own prom dress in high school, jackets, skirts, anything. Like I can pretty much do it all. It's on display on the dresser and I feel like it makes a really lovely border. My setup, I have my bells up there, I have a Chattanooga poster, I don't know, that's Tennessee or Georgia. I do not live anywhere near there but I love it and my boyfriend gave it to me so. The lines next to my altar is my childhood mirror that I painted black. This just, this whole setup is super important to me. I really box it out. Evil eyes, I got some golden keys, I got rosary beads, I, I have it all. And of course, I have this vintage book that's underneath here that's also from Strand. I don't wanna take everything up and off of it, but the pages are all like handcrafted. You could tell it's like super. It's just so cool. Um, the book is called something about hope, like hopelessly or hopeful or something random like that. And I feel like it really, really, really pieces everything together. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this altar tour. I really hope that you're enjoying your October. And without any further ado, if you like this video at any point, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below and follow me over on Instagram. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next vlogoween video. Bye. Mm -hmm.